me on it. Just hold that on a scale from one to ten. How important is it? Ten. A ten. Thank you. And see, I only heard ten. So good. I have your attention. You're in the right place. And we're going to really be able to put some great things into practice today. Uh, especially with what we've already heard. Because everything we're hearing is really going to help you with your productivity. So I want to share a story of... It's a story that's near and dear to my heart because it's a mentor of mine and he gave me a whole new perspective, speaking of perspectives, on how I look at time management and productivity. So this was maybe about 15 years ago. I had a new position and I felt like I was a little bit over, over the top, over, you know, out of my lead there. So I was overwhelmed, I was frustrated, there were a lot of challenges going on, and I had a lot of things to juggle at the same time. Is anyone shaking their head going, I can appreciate that? Right, we've all been there, or maybe you're even there now. And so I was kind of bold, and I went to him, and I shared with him that I was a little frustrated, I shared some of my frustrations. And what he said to me was very profound, and I hope that it's profound for you too. He said to me, Penny, I hired you because of your ability to make decisions. He says, and you do that very well. What you do with the rest of your time is up to you. So, first of all, its simplicity in itself broke my pattern of overwhelm. Because I was doing that really well, right? That overwhelm thing, right? I was doing that really well. But that broke that pattern. I thought, wow. That gave me a completely different perspective about the way that I approach my time management and my productivity. And that's what we're going to do today, that I'm going to help give you that gift as well of perspective. And all of the panelists are giving you new perspectives. So what I'd like to do is, yeah, it's a little cold, and I'd like to appreciate interactive learning. I came by all of your tables, and I said there are cards on your table. I'd like you to get the cards in the center of the table so that uh, each that there's everybody who has a set of cards, and then I'll tell you what those cards are. So please get those cards from the center of your table and allocate them. And if you have cards, everybody who has cards, I want you to stand up. Don't worry, it doesn't matter if you're has or have nots, okay? <laughs>
thinking, you know, uh, what does this really have to do with time management? And the, the fact is, is that how we do something is how we do everything. So these cards are going to tell a tale, a little bit. And we're going to look through the four drivers that are part of the ten to four drivers that make up how you get into the productivity zone. And we're going to go through them through this exercise, okay? So the first one is I'm going to ask you a series of questions to understand. So was anyone here kind of unsure of what to do and kind of lost? Just raise your hand. Right? A good portion of the room because I didn't give you any, a lot of details. Is that right? So isn't that the same with our life? That we start our day not being clear what it is that we need to do. And we expect to be in control of this. Duh, right? So it's really important that we have some clarity in what we're doing. We talked about goal setting earlier. How many people here set a goal for themselves and got up and created a goal for themselves? Just raise your hand. Right? So there's a couple of those people. Right? Because by setting goals for ourselves, that's how we, you know, we, we get that focus that we need and we then can go about using our time in the most efficient and effective manner. True or true? Right? And so those of you who raised your hand that felt kind of lost, I'll bet that's something that you feel on a regular basis. That's why how you do something is everything, is you can learn that from this, right? So I want you to write down on your notes, purpose. The first core driver of your productivity is purpose. Okay, so let's talk about what the second core driver is. So uh, did anybody take a look at the colors of their cards? Did they notice that? You noticed? And what do you think those colors represent? Sorry, did somebody sit over here? Time increments, it could be, right? It could also be, sorry, I don't have multicolors. It could also be different categories that you want to make sure you have time for, like family, like self, like work, right, and so forth. Could mean that. It could mean also different times of day when you have different types of energy, higher energy, lower energy, what you should be doing in different types of days, right? And so what you focus on and how you use that will determine your results. Does that make sense? Right? So focus is number two. It's the second core driver of your productivity. So this is a fun one. You don't have to raise your hand if you don't want to. But who thought any of the following questions in their head? This is stupid. <laughs> this is a waste of time. What is this anyway? Why is she doing this? Raise your hand if you feel comfortable. There's always a good amount of people who do it, right? <laughs> That's cool. That's cool, I get it. But there is a purpose behind it, right? Because what we say to ourselves, I want you to listen carefully to this. What we say to ourselves and the questions we ask ourselves have a direct impact on our productivity. If not the biggest impact, it impacts everything else. Right? Because it's those thought patterns, those unproductive thought patterns that are our biggest distraction. True or true? True. true. I knew you'd agree with me. <laughs> so, true or false. Number, number three, to write down as your core drivers, is language. It's that self talk and questions that we ask ourselves. And lastly, I want you to write down number four, which is physiology. And physiology, even though all of these four core drivers will drive from unproductive behavior and, and states to productive states, they all will, physiology is the easiest and the quickest. You may have noticed that you got up out of your seat and you started moving around. It was a different energy than you had, right? And so when we get stuck, that's an opportunity for us. If you're sitting on your desk and you're like this in the afternoon, it's because your body needs to move. You need to get up and move. We get more creative, we get another perspective when we get up and move. So that's physiology. So uh, that being said, is those are the four core drivers of our productivity. So don't, let's just repeat them again because I we don't have slides for that. So it's purpose, it's focus, language, and physiology. Awesome, thank you. Now, um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was in Stephen Covey's book, uh, called First Things First. Has anyone read that? A couple people, right? He talks about the different generations of time management. 
right? So because he wants to outline what he's doing as the third generation. So the first generation was about task lists, right? And that's an important resource. People get that dump out of your head, but it's a resource and it's not the solution to time management, right? So the second generation he talks about is planners, right? And a good friend of mine, Hiram Smith, who wrote the uh, forward to my, to my book was the founder of Franklin Planners, right? And, uh, and so he would totally agree that that was the next generation. Uh, but you know, that's great and we get our time blocked and we plan it and that's important and it's an important part of time management, but that's not the solution either, right? So Stephen Covey said, so what it is, this third generation is about priorities and basing our priorities on our values, right? And everybody's shaking their head. I see a lot of people shaking their heads that they agree, right? And I agree, values are really important to be clear what our values are and set our priorities based on it. But who here violates their values on a regular basis? <laughs> right? So that can't be the answer either, right? So the fourth generation, the next generation of time management is energy management, okay? And I just told you what the four drivers of energy management are. Purpose focus, language, and physiology, because it's how we show up for our time that makes all the difference, right? What's the difference between a, 20, a, a day, we all have 24 hours in the day, it's finite, right? And so what's the difference between one of those days where you're just like, oh, this was so great, I got so much done today, right? Everybody's had days like that? And then what about those days that feel like death by a thousand paper cuts and you, <laughs> right? Same number of hours, what's the difference? The difference is the energy. It's how much of yourself you brought to that time. So please understand that time never was and never will be a measure of productivity, okay? It's energy, energy management. So uh, lastly, what I wanted to do is share from your book, it's hardly 15 minutes fit all we want to fit in here. Um, you know, in my book I talk about all 10, there's actually 10 core drivers, and one of the things, it's called the productivity zone, and those 10 core drivers get us into the productivity zone. There's a framework that I use that I want to briefly describe for you. And that framework is this, is if you imagine a bell curve, everyone know what a bell curve looks like? Right, so we're not using the distribution part of it, we're just using it as a picture, okay? So the center part of the bell curve is where the productivity zone is. And that's where these 10 core drivers, as long as you focus on those and you utilize those, you'll be able to get into the productivity zone. So you're probably thinking, and this is important, what's on the outside of the zone, right? <laughs> what do you think it is? It's stress. Stress is on the outside, and we practically live there, don't we? <laughs> right? Some people are like, you know, champions of stress. Well, that's not where we want to be. We want to be in the productivity zone, okay? And those stresses have a name. And, I, and yes, maybe it's oversimplified, and that's my, as I told you, my mentor gave me that as a, uh, as a tip, and I, and I see that as, as a lot of value. On either side, on the left-hand side of the curve, it has a name called procrastination. That's where we don't make decisions on our crap, right? That's when we don't make decisions, that's where we hold things back, that's procrastination. Can anybody guess what's on the other side of the curve? Perfectionism, over-functioning, right? Because we can be really effective but not very efficient, right? So that, that's also, uh, in both sides, <coughs> create stress for ourselves and for others around because there's collateral damage. So that's the productivity curve and understanding what's on either side. And in the book, I go into a lot more detail about the 10 core drivers <laughs> as well as uh, the whole framework so that you can understand it. And so finally, uh, to, to close today, what I'd like to leave you with is a story about a man who every day he would go to work and he would um, bring his tuna sandwich for his lunch and he'd sit with his colleagues and they'd eat and every day he would complain about this tuna sandwich. <laughs> so he'd say, tuna again? And he's like, you know, I'm really getting sick of tuna. God, I hate the smell of tuna. Every day, something else about his tuna sandwich. So one of his colleagues finally said to him, dude, why don't you just ask your wife to make you another sandwich? And he goes, what do you mean? He said, you know, turkey, roast beef, something else. And he said, well, what do you mean? I'm not married, I live alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, you know, so, duh, right? But we do this all the time. We don't see our own patterns. It's easy for us to see it from him, right? Or from anyone else. So the fact is, is now you know the four core drivers that you can immediately put into play. You can immediately write them down, keep them on your desk, and put them into play, and put them into practice. Because how we do something is how we do everything. So thank you. <laughs>